Okay. South Africa. So you know that this uh, <laughs> situation that we're going to go to now, uh, it's a, a report on teenage pregnancies in the central region. It shows that uh, teachers are responsible for 6% of the over 12,000 cases of teenage pregnancies in the central region in 2016. And this, according to the Ghana Health Service, the 12,048 figure is a slight drop from the previous year's figure of over 14,000 cases uh, of teenage pregnancy. There's also a rise in maternal mortality in the central region. Uh, first, we want to get the full picture in this story, and then will link up with Richard Kwejo Nyako, our Central Region Correspondent. We are at the University of Cape Coast where the 2016 is being reviewed by the Ghana Health Service in the Central Region. And they've been talking critically about teenage pregnancy, about maternal uh, mortality, and also about HIV. According to their statistic, 90 uh, women died uh, in their bid to give life. And then on the side of teenage pregnancy, we look at the statistics from 2014, it was 13,355. 2015, it was 13,048. And 2016, the year under review, it was 12,048. And this is really, really alarming. And according to the Ghana Health Service, we are taking steps to ensure that they reduce the figures drastically. And so that is why they sought to go behind these figures to actually understand who are impregnating these teenage girls. They also even added that about 371 of these girls who got pregnant were below 14 years. And that is really ridiculous and alarming. We have got uh, Dr. Kakari. It means that out of every 100 pregnant women, 14 are. Uh, Teenagers. I mean, they are not mature. I show that when they are below 19, the, the probability that they will face challenges and possibly die is very high. So they are not mature. The parents and everything is not mature. So the, as you grow older, then you get mature. I mean, it's alarming. I mean, you don't help, you don't want it. I mean, it's a community. From, it starts from the community. So you have a generation which is behaving as such. We are going to put in place strategies and engage the communities and then do a lot of health promoting and preventive activities to make sure that it doesn't happen in the generations which are following. So after dealing with the generations which are, then probably we'll start uh, uh, seeing results in about three or four years. Let's look at um, something interesting that you added to this year's figures and you went behind in these figures to actually know those uh, the profession of these people that impregnated these children. Very interesting. And so, I mean, when you found out that, I mean, 5.9 uh, were teachers and 17.8 were peasant farmers and all of that, what was your immediate reaction? There may be some aspects which may be surprising, uh, not in terms of what you're asking, but in terms of, say, the age of the, the men who impregnated them. Now, you found out that about 1.1 percent also children below 13 years. That one is a bit surprising. So, but for the uh, people who get them pregnant, it's not surprising. But now it helps us, it makes us see the people we are going to target for the various aspects of interactions. Now if you know, for example, small scale miners are part of the people causing the damage. They are not that many as the present family. They are not that many, yes. but they form a large part of the people who impregnate them. It means that we have a major problem there, and we have to deal with them. We have to talk with them so that we come up with some. They understand the issues, and then probably and these issues, the issues do not only have to do with the interaction, the intercourse with the issue, have to do with the family planning, the use of condoms and all those things. We have to talk about all these things. And we teach us, we teach us. You, you, you imagine that teachers that are supposed to teach these children and they never have That has been happening, is it surprising? It's not, it, it would have been more surprising if we had <laughs> we have not seen otherwise. So it's things which we have to tackle. This, uh, this one is one of the evidence to show the teachers that actually it's not that they are being accused from you. They have even carried out a survey and then they show now we can now talk to, to them about evidence. And then you also know what to do. And as I'm saying, it has to do with pregnancy. Pregnancy also has to do with it related to infections, isn't it? The fact that the person has got pregnant it means that the person has got what? It was, uh, uh, 
sex without uh, 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 protection, uh, barrier pro uh, protection. So it means that there's another aspect of it. So it means uh, you have to talk to them about the issue of family, the issue of making sure that you use barrier methods, even if you are going to do these things. But sometimes you cannot even prevent them. So the issues of using barrier, the condoms, and all those things, as the, that also educate them that uh, just like the women are getting pregnant, it's possible they, they can also get pregnant with infections or give infections to the women. Cuts across various uh, stakeholder level, um, right from the family, even the individual who is pregnant as a woman, through to the community. which is the economy. So um, going forward, we as a health sector, we are looking at how to deploy the required numbers of staff, qualified staff, like the midwives, physician assistants, the community of nurses, that we are trained to provide preventive and promotive health services. And we have placed them in the communities. We, it's our duty to see to it that we produce such uh, cadres of staff and place them in the community to plan, organize, and provide these essential preventive, promotive, and then a bit of the minor curative services to make sure that the community is receiving full package of what? Essential services. And they are doing all that in tandem with the community members themselves. For them to first of all always recognize the magnitude of the health problem that they are living with. And the health problems that we are facing are created right from the, the homes, from the individuals to the community level, and then society at large. So we want first and foremost to place the personnel there and because of that, as a region, we've been trying to even get midwives to be at the chief's uh, zones, which are now realigned to the electoral areas or the electoral zones. We have a challenge with the personnel that we deploy to the communities, to these chief zones, getting accommodation. And even where they get the accommodation, the suitability of the accommodation. So we just came out of this meeting with a big issue about where they've been citing the construction of these chips compounds. The chips compounds, they are usually in very isolated places that you put one community of nurse who is a, a young girl. He doesn't have the courage to stay in that isolated place. Some of the uh, compounds are located at the cemeteries. And you go and put one community, a very young community, imagine your daughter of that age, you go and place her in that camera. So going forward, we said we have to engage all those who are involved in supporting the health center in constructing these uh, health facilities, that we have to always look carefully at the siting of these facilities so that we can have these personnel living in their community and working with our people will be able to address the causes of this uh, maternal deaths. Uh, so moving forward, we will be engaging stakeholders, health centers at the various levels, right from the community to the national and even the international level. Very devastating. Instead of these children growing up to become people like us, becoming nurses and teachers, reporters, as we see you, they are rather getting pregnant. And that's Mm. Yeah. Great, great. And uh, I, I think that as community leaders and as people who are supposed to be responsible in the communities in where we live, we also need to be looking out for things like these. Uh, if the parents is very much well aware how the children behave and the interactivity between the two are very much good, they'll get to know that there's, there's something a bit untoward and a bit weird about the behavioral patterns of their children. And they would be in a position to arrest some of these difficulties when they arise. Because when the child, in that condition of inaccessibility, and uh, not having the ability to perhaps uh, advocate for his or her own right, is put in that way, 
uh, it becomes difficult for the going forward or the improvement of the child mm. in many respects. Yeah. Um, it's because the parents are not privileged to say because you're pregnant or once you've gotten pregnant, you just take a year off school and go back to school. Ultimately, it leads to you either a truncation of your education and then you don't get to see the realization of your dreams. Wow. But we all know education Let's is the best way to improve life levels of many people. Definitely. Let's link up with Richard Kwejonyako now. Uh, good morning to you, uh, Kwejonyako. Good morning, Mama Bi. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm okay. I'm okay. So, obviously, I understand that uh, some teachers in the central region are not happy about this. What's, what have, have you been hearing? Well, uh, they are not happy, and, but it, it makes some feel that the figure could be more because the data upon which um, uh, this figure came out is lesser than the 1,040 that uh, is currently on our screen because mm. the data was uh, the data used was 5,048 and that is how come we got 5.9 so if it were like 4,048 it could be more the figure the figure could be more it could be more than 1,000. Mm. And, and these so, are these are these are just the people who went through the proper, you know, uh, went through the hospitals. That's the hospital exact, records. Exactly, exactly. Because health officials indicate that um, there are some that deliver, still deliver in the house, and there are some that came. So all of these are institutional records that have come to the health, the attention of the health um, authority. So mm. the figure could be more, and um, it is not that you are, you are not seeing certain. Um, and certain professions uh, in the list that were pasted because this is the top five professions and people uh, that are working that affect these people. So there could be fishermen, there could be journalists, there could be teachers, there could be mechanics and other people that are also. But it's because the teachers are supposed to supervise and nurture these students to get great future. That is why the teachers own uh, ha, uh, have become, I mean, something that we are currently talk, uh, talking about. Mm. So if you look at the peasant farmers, they, someone will say that they are in a comfortable league. If you look at other professions as well, you, you would also see that, I mean, so if we, I, I will run you by the figures that we have, small scale farmers, uh, they had 19.3, we had drivers, 13.2, uh, small scale miners, 7.8. Unemployed uh, 6.9, and then primary and secondary school teachers 5.9. Mm. So um, it's been something that has been going on because in 2014 they recorded 13,355 teenage pregnant uh, pregnant cases uh, in 2015. In 2015, it was the same thing. Uh, mm. It was the, around the same figure. Uh, uh, three, uh, 13,048, and here we are in 2016, and here we are in 2016 that uh, we have recorded 12,048 cases. Yeah. So it is really, really alarming. I did some uh, documentary at Elmina, and I spoke with a woman, a woman who has nine children in the night. The woman doesn't even know where the children sleep. I mean, seven of the children, he, he does not even know where the children sleep. And she was six months pregnant. So it is like a cycle. Yeah. Um, these children that are sleeping out today, these children that are sleeping out today, um, I mean, they obviously get pregnant when someone gives them yeah. uh, like two CDs or five CDs. To, to ensure that they make mm. ends meet. So, Mami, Rich, so that is mm. how it is now. Richard, take us through the ages of these children we're talking about. Well, um, the ages uh, range 19 and below, okay. and surprisingly, um, 371 um, uh, girls um, were below 14. 14, so 14 years and below. And if you look at some of the records, they have 11 years, 12 years, 13 years, 14 years getting pregnant. So they are part of the 371 uh, teenagers that. Uh, that got pregnant in the year under review. Wow. That is crazy. So and you know that. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard, so th this has ex this been exposed by the Ghana Health Service, correct? Ex exactly. It's been exposed by the Ghana Health Service because they saw uh, how the trend was going and they decided that they, decided that they would go beyond 
uh, this trend, the, the common figures, and then mm -hmm. unravel the mystery behind those who do impregnate these uh, children. And so are are they hoping? Are they hoping that there will be prosecutions because if you uh, if you impregnate uh, a girl who who is not an adult, that's an offence. Yes, for for the health service, they are not thinking prosecution, but they are thinking about the reduction uh, in in the figures that they are recording. But for uh, the domestic violence and victim support unit, you know, I've been in touch with them, and they are saying that some of these cases do not even get to them. I mean, it is when they are re reported that they follow up. When mm -hmm. they are not reported, I mean, they cannot, out of their own volition, go after people that are pregnant and all of that. So mm -hmm. the prosecution stands on the door of the domestic violence and victim support unit and then the gender advocates, I mean, the Ministry of uh, Women and, and, I mean, Gender and Social Protection. And so for, for, for the prosecution, it is within their remit because you know that under our law, any girl that has sex or that gets pregnant under the age of, under the age of, 16 is the farming. Mm. But are we prosecuting these children, uh, these people that are perpetrating um, this? No, we are not We are not prosecuting mm. them. And so the domestic violence and victim support unit, as well as the Ghana Police Service, would have to do more All in right. ensuring that these children are protected. Okay. Richard, we'll leave it here. Uh, but still on the same subject, we're curious. We want to find out what happens to teachers uh, who are caught in the act of sleeping with young girls who are not of age. Philippa Lassing is the NATS president, and uh, she joins us. Good morning to you, ma'am. Thank you for your time. Good morning, mama. Mm. So just briefly on this issue, what happens to a teacher uh, when, she, when he's caught sleeping with a child? Yeah, thank you very much, madam. I want to use this medium to say good morning to your cherished listeners, especially the teachers and, for that matter, NATS members. Yeah, this is a, a criminal issue. And for us as a union, that is not. We take our members through the code of conduct and all that, educate them on the do's and don'ts. Mm. But when there is a criminal issue, it will have to be investigated. And when it is proven beyond all doubt, the police service will take action. Then the GS, that is the employer, will also take action. So it, it is not a matter with the union to take action and do it. Okay. All right. Uh, Madam Philippa Lassen, we'll leave it here. That's yes. the Ghana National Association of Teachers Presidents. Uh, and, and we would have to. But this is not the end of this conversation. It's definitely to be continued. Well,